We need to start getting that herbage removed early on in the season to ensure that we get three cuts by early September. Today we're standing in a paddock of perennial ryegrass and red clover. And the reason that we're incorporating red clover into some of our silage sports is because of its biological nitrogen fixation capability, where it can take atmospheric nitrogen and fix up to 150 to 200 kilos of nitrogen per hectare. Uh, this sport here behind us was sown in August 2020. It was sown following a run of a disc harrow and sown with a one pass. And the, the red clover varieties that we sold here, we selected from the UK recommended list. And we paid particular attention to the third year of harvest yield and the clover percentage in the sward because we wanted to identify the most persistent varieties uh, suitable to our system here. The perennial ryegrass varieties that we sold down with it, we selected from the pasture profit index. And we wanted varieties that were very productive but they still offered us really high quality uh, pasture. And the reason we have a particular focus on, on quality is because inevitably the red clover is going to die out of these swards at five to six years uh, time. Um, and we're going to be left with a, a high quality perennial ryegrass sward that can be incorporated back into our, our grazing rotation. Uh, so it's really important that we have varieties that have proven grazing performance uh, and that we select those and to you know write off the cost of the reseeding over a longer period of time uh, you know 10 years plus. The sward here behind us over its full first production year of 2021 it grew 16.9 tonnes however we had a very low uh, clover proportion at the beginning of the year and that's probably because of the autumn reseed and we'd be probably recommending a spring reseed rather than an autumn reseed because you have a much wider window of opportunity to ensure you get on your post-emergent spray and get it grazed off before going into the winter months. We couldn't get it grazed off due to poor ground conditions. We couldn't get it sprayed until the spring. So we were very much uh, doing a lot of the management that we should have done after sowing the following spring. And that resulted in a suppressed clover proportion in the sward right up until the first cut was taken. So because of that, we probably used conventional amount of nitrogen. So we spread 190 kilos of nitrogen over the first year uh, in exchange for growing 16.9 uh, tonnes. That silage was taken across the three cut system and we fed that back to our weanlands over the last winter where we, we, where we achieved uh, 0 0.83 kilos of gain per day on our weanling dairy beef animals. So really there is a high level of animal performance potential uh, to be achieved on the back of uh, high quality red clover and perennial ryegrass silage. Uh, but really, you know, we can see in some of the gapways here behind us, we can see how susceptible to physical damage the red clover plant is. And that's because of, you know, its, its growing point is a lot higher in the sward than we have with white clover or with our perennial ryegrass. So it's more susceptible to damage by machinery or grazing animals. And really that's where we see, you know, the role of red clover is more or less exclusively to silage production. So the sward here behind us is now in its second production year. And over this year, there's no chemical nitrogen been applied to this sward. All of its nutrients are coming via organic manures and the addition of some O730 to replace the P and K offtake from the silage crops. There's somewhere in the region of three to three and a half thousand kilos of dry matter per hectare on the paddock here behind us. And this is targeted to be cut in the next three to four weeks. So by mid-May, you need to be having your first cut taken off your perennial ryegrass and red clover silage swords. And there's multiple benefits to doing this. But generally, red clover is in a multi-cut system, so we need to start getting that herbage removed early on in the season to ensure that we get three cuts by early September. And we know that going beyond this, we really reduce the success of ensiling uh, high clover crops uh, late on in the season. And also, you know, by getting the, the first cut removed early on, we allow a lot of light penetrate the sward and encourage an, an increased proportion of clover for the second and third cut uh, crops uh, to come over the summer.